Imagine Rome in the first century AD. The city is still reeling from the turbulent reign of Emperor Nero, whose extravagant golden palace, the Dumas Area, had consumed a vast swath of central Rome after a devastating fire. Public sentiment was low, and Rome needed a symbol of healing, a gift back to its people. This is where the story of the Colosseum truly begins. In Setentad, Emperor Vespasian, founder of the Flavian dynasty, decided to undertake a colossal building project, literally. He chose the site of Nero's artificial lake, a move that was both practical and symbolic. By draining the lake and building a public amphitheater on the site of the former imperial pleasure grounds, Vespasian was effectively giving the land back to the Roman citizens. It was a powerful statement. Rome is for Romans, not just emperor. Construction began around 72 AD. Under Ves Think about that for a moment. Ancient Romans, without modern machinery, embarked on a project of this scale. They used an incredible amount of materials. Volcanic rock called travertine for the main piers, tufa for the inner walls, and brick-faced concrete for the vaults. Tens of thousands of slaves, skilled laborers, and craftsmen toiled for years. It was a monumental undertaking showcasing Roman engineering and organizational prowess at its absolute peak. Vespasian didn't live to see its completion, passing Hawaii in 79 AD. It was his son, Titus, who had the honor of inaugurating the Flavian Amphitheater, as it was originally known, Inocente Ad. And what an inauguration it was. Historians tell us the opening ceremonies lasted for a hundred days, featuring gladiatorial contests, animal hunts, and public executions.